William, thank you for joining us. How do people actually survive during such economic turmoil? The economy minister says he has inherited the worst economic legacy in Argentina's history. He obviously wants to try to improve things. But while this has all been happening, how have people even been managing to buy food for their families? Well, Argentina is, <clears throat> excuse me, undergoing a very miserable time economically, and it has been for quite some time. But we have to also remember that, relatively speaking, within a Latin American context, it's not one of the poorest countries. Uh, and this is something that opponents of Millet have raised, that if he undertakes a shock doctrine in Argentina, as he's promising, uh, the 40% poverty rate, the 140% inflation rate are going to rise and Argentinian citizens will experience, many of them more than now, will experience a kind of life that, you would, that they would expect to see in other parts of Latin America, i.e. Their, their purchasing power is going to fall, their income will fall, and they'll face quite a prolonged period of economic uncertainty. Um, Argentinian people have got used to making their way around this economic mess. They haven't had support from the political class in this, but there has been a social safety net. And that's something that Javier Millet is promising to take away with cuts to subsidies and cuts to social security, among many other things. Why would the people have voted therefore for Millet? In other words, is his election victory a result only of the economic turmoil, or is it also a political message? I mean, like all Latin American countries, the division between left and right is much starker than it is across much of the rest of the world. Um, to an extent. I mean, I think actually it's a region in the world where the terms left and right are sometimes not as helpful as we might think they are. Um, and the and Millet's coalition is not ideologically coherent. He's holding together three quite distinct groups, neoliberals or libertarians on the one hand, traditional right wingers uh, who came third in the first round of the presidential election on the other hand, and then really neo-fascists uh, who are the kind of outriders of this coalition apologists for dictatorship and so on. Um, the the vote for him and the vote for this kind of strange coalition that's behind him is born out of despair. And it is despair both at the longstanding economic problems in Argentina, but also with the apparent impotence of the political class, whether that's the traditional um, somewhat leftist Peronists uh, or the traditional right um, represented by Patricia Bullrich, who has taken a job in this new government. Is it a cyclical issue for Argentina or is it very particular to the moment? And I suppose we could call the moment something like the last 10 years at least, because Argentina has been through this before. You look at its history over the past couple of hundred years as well, from having been what it was to what it is nowadays, people would say over the course of history, that's a pretty strange collapse. Even though you, I agree, you say that Argentina is certainly not one of the poorest countries in Latin America from what it was, and in terms of the cyclical nature of this, is it likely to happen again? I mean, it certainly looks cyclical, but the problem with calling something like that cyclical in a general sense is that you, you ascribe a sort of fatalism to it, that Argentina will always be bouncing between these periods of boom and bust. Um, Argentina was a very rich country at the beginning of the 20th century, but it was a very different country. The world was a completely different place. Uh, and Argentina has not had a clear plan of how it wants to make its citizens uh, wealthier in the current context. Now, it did do pretty well economically for a time in the 2000s, um, particularly during the, the first Kirchner period where things were looking better, there was a better stabilization plan and so on. Uh, but really, there's just been a whole series of, of poorly performing plans. Macri, who was elected to supposedly fix everything, uh, failed to do so. The Peronists really haven't managed to do much beyond uh, getting lifelines from, from China and so on. So it, it, while there isn't a, 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 a national conversation about the way out of this, then there's always the risk of backsliding into economic collapse. But Millet's solution is to provoke a collapse. He said that already. He's going, the inflation's going to go up. Um, Poverty is likely to increase in the medium term. Uh, one of the opposition leaders, Juan Grabois, has described this as a policy of social murder. Uh, and it's going to be very interesting to see how the opposition responds to this, how the labor unions respond to this, because it, it looks to the Argentine people like poor Argentines are having to pay the way out of the country's problems. There will be tens, hundreds of thousands of people on the street saying that this is not the right solution. 
William, you know what? I would have really enjoyed having you as my lecturer for my studies in Latin American <laughs> politics, but you would have probably had to be about eight years old at the time. I really, really appreciate it, William. Thanks a lot.